everybody welcome back to the channel thank you for watching thank you all for subscribing things are going pretty good we're starting to get some more subscribers more viewership that's awesome well as you saw in the last video on big mo we pulled some things apart did some examinations some new parts are starting to show up old parts old bearing check that out pretty gnarly uh old hydraulic pump the bolt that would not come out of the frame bent this frame a little bit this i'm confident would be able to be hammered back and nope we're not going to do that i ordered a whole bunch of parts and i also got me some fire hose some big stuff some little stuff to wrap some of this hydraulic hose the new stuff back in now, I want to take a minute to show you guys this. Yep. What did I do there? Well, between me, myself, and a few other people helping me, we did this. So this is a this was a pipe that comes off of the goes back into the actual. Um, where did this go? It goes back to the tank. Well. It's got this whole curvy dude right here, right? And then it had the hose. Well, this hose wasn't bad, but it was also original, I'm pretty sure, or really close to original. It had Fomoco on it, and it had a lot of age on it. You can tell the rubber was starting to crack. Well, rubber, plastics, all those deteriorate over time. So I took it over to a guy. I, I got a guy. Well, he says, I put this on the counter. I plopped it on the counter. I said, he goes, well, that's a big one. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, I said, uh, I don't know what you mean. He goes, well, I don't normally deal with hoses that big. I said, oh, okay. Because I said, any idea how to fix this? And he's like looking at it. And he, there again, being in the business for many, many years, a local, a local guy, he says, you know what? He disappears in the back. Comes back, comes back with this fitting right here. Now, this has a pipe fitting on this end. And it has your JIC fitting on this end. A little swivelly thing, right? He goes, how about I braze this fitting onto your pipe? I said, how good you brazing? Yeah, I asked him that. Don't be afraid to ask the questions, folks. He goes, never had one leak. I said, that's the kind of credentials I'm looking for. I said, let's do it. And this cost, just to get this cut and brazed, was $109. It's not cheap, but this is also not available. So what he did for me by doing this is he made it so we can make a hose. So Napa can make this hose. They ordered me the JIC fittings for each end, a male on each end, because this one had a male on the outer end, male on this end. Now I have a serviceable part. Barring any kind of catastrophic whatever's may happen. I'm trying to screw it back together here. Ow! Oh! On my foot! Alright, better than drop it on the end. Come on. I'll put a little a lube on this and it'll go together smoother and better. But anyway, so I'm able to screw this together like this now with this male end. And now I have my hose back. And I measured critical measurement from here to the tip. And we matched that. So my Napa guy was able to put this end in, crimp it, come out here, slide this on. We took a measurement, looked good, crimped it. So that's how we got around that horn, right? Now the original reason we went after this thing is because of this right here. For those of you that weren't watching the previous video, you can see right here, that joker there has got a notch out of it. It had been rubbing against the frame a lot. Till it roared through the rubber, wore through some wires, and made it weak enough that it... Psh, that's why it would hold a little pressure. It wouldn't hold a lot of pressure. So we got a new one made. The only concern I have is we didn't have this end in stock at Napa. Those angles ain't quite the same. Pretty sure this is a 45, and my guy ordered a 30. I told him, I said, um, those don't match. He goes... Yeah, but your next size up was a 45. I said, I'm not so sure that's not a 45 looking at it. Versus looking at this one, hold it flat. As you guys can see here, 
trying to get it kind of anyway there might be enough wiggle room because this hooks onto the pump there might be enough wiggle room that this will work but he said if it didn't he'll make it right with me i'm like that's all i need to hear because he can order another 45 he stocks the hose we're back in business so anyway some of the parts are starting to show up now the fire hose is to put around these hoses and why why you ask i said well i want a little more protection well you can also have the argument with well, this one also lasted a lot of years so the boss just barges in mid conversation with you guys i am so sorry i apologize for it what's up babe huh you need a code one br549 that's a good code anyway we're gonna put the old uh hose on here fire hose to protect it do a little zip tie in so it comes up to the frame it's got another layer of something pretty tough and flexible that it has to wear through before it goes after my hose again because right now as far as hoses go and that fix on the end i'm into this for over 300 dollars. i don't want these hoses i don't want to look at them for another decade or two just saying that out loud all right i'm gonna take you out to the lean to we're gonna look at a few other things that i need to pay attention to well silly me walked out here without my jacket on we'll see how i hold up for a little bit uh we uh it's 20 22 degrees out this morning so it's a little chilly but the sun's out and the wind's not blowing very much which makes it feel a whole lot better well just wanted to show you guys how far we got on the cleaning up of things it's all dry dirt and grease free Took me about two and a half hours of scrubbing to get all that done, and uh, but it's worth it. Some of the things we're gonna start to do is, I'm not sure why somebody did that or that. Maybe at one time it was hard to get those bolts off, so they welded something on to knock them off. Looks like pieces of a bolt. Well, and over here they did the same thing on one of them, hard to see on the dark side of the barn. Didn't do that one. So I'm gonna knock one of those out. And today's gonna be one of those days where I go and get bolts. So I'm gonna bring you along on a couple of things I'm doing out here on the backhoe end of things. We're gonna put all these bolts into my container here. We're gonna take a little inventory and we're gonna measure things. So some of these bolts that hold the weights on, the threads, are all shiny and smooshed over and stuff. Probably be fine to just jam them back in there, and but I can't do that. I just can't bring myself to do that. So we're gonna get new bolts for a lot of this stuff. And somebody, somebody might be going, Michael, how come you always recycle, reuse? I'm like, yes, I do. But on a heavy duty tractor, heavy duty things going on and bolts that I don't wanna touch again for two or three decades or a hundred years, I want to put on new bolts because you never know how many times they've been tightening, loosened, tightening, loosened, and who's put the, you know, the gorilla grip on it versus who's torqued them or, you know, and everything in between. I'll know what I'm tightening down and I'll know what to expect. And if it breaks, it'll be a surprise to me and not because I'm like, I should have used new bolts. Well, down here, we're going to pay attention a little bit to this end. Let's see if we got you in frame. We have a hose that's pretty frayed here rubber is just peeling off so we got one here and we got one that looks a little newer here but um i don't know how new but i want to replace it here we've got some 90 degrees some jic stuff here's the pipe that broke off now i need to get something to stand on something safe like a bucket you know now these two hoses here run the extend a hoe. So when the I got a pedal I can push in the cab that extends that bucket out, I don't know, another four or five feet. Allows you to dig a lot deeper. Now this pipe thread broke off because I'm pretty sure this was sticking out far enough. It was sticking out further than the other one for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why they couldn't be the same length. Let me get you on up in here and see if you can see what I'm talking about. See where that, that's where that plugs in there. 
and this one here is shorter so I'm not sure why somebody put an adapter here and uh, I don't know why but I'm gonna need an easy out to get that out I'll probably stop by my local hobo freight and see if they've got some that won't be in there too tight I can put some grease on it get in there and back that out we're gonna get a new piece of pipe probably two because I'm probably gonna go ahead and undo this one re redo all the threads on it as far as putting new uh, thread tape on the pipe and here and then we're gonna get new hoses made for both if you remember late last summer so here's some other hoses that eventually will give out on me as you can see this hose here is newer and there was a hose where was it up here somewhere yeah we got another we got another hose that's getting a little tired up here that needs to be redone yep i'm not sure why this one does this goes through a big one and then next down to this little guy here and that's all for the bucket curl and pull back it looks like this should go straight into here why 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 wouldn't it because you can put a female jic on the end of one of these i think that's what i'm going to have to do I have no idea why somebody did that because that's restricting flow this is a big fitting this is a small hose it's restricting flow and this would be on the extending side you know you'd actually lose some power by necking it down or make it you're gonna make it slower now I'll walk around the other side I'm gonna look at the other side I just want to get all the hoses now there's a lot of hoses on here that are old this guy here these are some old hoses here for the lift cylinders easy to get at but not failed yet and also have some provisions for uh, having hoses made quickly now this hose looks a little newer on this end now this one extends out really long here because when that extend a hoe goes out this whole thing slides that way and when that slides that way Hmm. We shall see. We'll do some doctoring on that, but the first thing I got to get fixed is get this thing sealed back up up here with new hoses here. So we're going to be spending several dollars on hoses over the next few weeks just because, you know, I've gotten this one taken care of that slides down through that opening underneath there. Well, you can see where I'm pointing, there's a hole. Oh, right down in there that these hoses go through for the pump and the one that returns back to the oil tank all right well my arms are getting chilly let's get some wrenches out here and pop these hoses off and guys don't be afraid to take pictures take pictures because you're gonna ask yourself where'd that go how'd that go so I can actually take a picture of this side and I can see the whole what's going on here because when I dismantle this there's another there's another set of hoses coming off of here which I'm not sure what they do I mean not hoses but it's capped off on both sides somebody did a little something there you know can you My guess is you could pin the upper bucket. Like I've got a butt, like right now, let me show you. You could pin it like I've got that, and that'll restrict that from moving. But you could run other hoses down here and down the length of it for a thumb maybe, and run your thumb with it. Because that way you got somewhere for the hydraulic pressure to go. It's not just all going brr. Huh. That might be a future project. Get a picture of the other side here. Oh, 
All right, we're back from the hardware trip. Okay, we're back from the hardware store. I sat down with all my hardware. You know, your these are all three quarter uh, ten bolts here, including the one that had this. So I've got all new bolts here. So here's my assortment. I had to buy some of these, some of these. As you can see on some of these here, the lock washer, let's just say it's lost a lot of energy <laughs> being collapsed for so many years. As you can see how much more this has. So I got a whole bunch of bolts. I got three quarter inch washers. These are all grade eight stuff. All the blue stuff is grade eight. I got a whole bunch of assortment of stainless Hose clamps for my hoses that I'll be putting new hoses on. And uh, there again, I got some smaller bolts. I went through the whole thing that I had out there on my bench and kind of sorted through what I needed. Now, some of these most likely can be reused. They look like they're close to being pretty much original. But these are going my used boat pile. See, these are rusty, crusty ones. I got me some, let's see, did I get the right length here? They're all in here somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's here. Where? Yeah, I just dumped them in a container so I can carry it back and forth. Why didn't I? I know I did. I went through everything I wrote down on my list. Yep, that's not long enough. I only got like four of them because that's the only four I needed. Are you kidding me? Maybe I screwed up. Maybe I didn't get them. Maybe I still need them. Ah, got it. I'm not seeing it. Well, okay. I screwed up. I didn't get... These were 5 sixteenths. I know. I must accidentally mark them off the list. Doggone it. Don't put it in there. Those are new stuff. Anyway, you know, you can take your regular caliper like this, measure your bolts, come out to, you know... Hey, that's 738. That's real close to 750, which is three quarter. You can take your little thread gauge, pitch gauge here, determine what the pitch is, so you're getting exactly what you need. So the good news is I got all new bolts. So like this guy here, we'll get a new washer and a new piece like that, and that's ready to go back together. Hold my weights on. I needed rubber washers. That go underneath. Where'd it go? Well, now, why, why? Oh, here it is. Had a carriage bolt that goes underneath the radiator here. Dun, dun, dun. So it slides in. And goes back in place. And then this drops down through the frame. This one was stuck, as I showed you before. And I had to bend it to get it out. Still got to get the bolt out of the frame. But the cool part is that the local... Some people say Thesons, I call it Tysons, Tractor Supplies, they'll have it, where you can buy these bolts in bulk. So you put everything blue in one bag and they charge you by the pound. It's actually a pretty economical way to do things. Uh, so that's what I did. I bought all this in bulk. And uh, it's going to make it easy. Now, another thing I bought, this is called an Easy Out. I uh, bought it at, it's like $16 at O'Reilly's. No, this isn't a high quality one. This isn't a snap on or it probably is going to just snap off. But this will go down. Let me show you here real quick. The piece of pipe that's broke off is this diameter. This will actually go in here and it's fluted in a direction that goes this direction. So the more you tighten it, the more it wants to bite and it'll pull those threads out of that cylinder that I got out there. We'll do that after a bit. Um, and I just had to have this. Look at this thing. Now this was like $13 for a micro ratchet. My wife goes, why did you get that? Why did you waste your money? I didn't waste my money. She's helped me do some stuff on my car before. How does it let go? Of, how does it come out? How does it, how does it become mine? What happened here? Don't make me cut you. Uh, all right, I will. Let go. 
Well, that's, there we go. Ain't that a cute little booger? But working underneath the dash of your car, you get a little, little six millimeter socket on there, you can get in there and that's why I got that. That'll go in my ratchet pile in my toolbox. So when you see something, it's the time to get it. And it's like, yep, I'll need that in the future, most likely. Now, the other thing I did buy that I'll show you here is our existing pipe broke off. So I bought new ones. The other thing that the other one, this one had that caused it to break off, it had this extension on it. And then it had this piece on it, which took it out from behind the protection of the steel. So this stuck up a little bit. Now it could get whacked, right? So I went to the store and bought this guy. So now this one, packaging everywhere. This one has a the same JIC fitting here on this end. But now I can pipe through this back onto my cylinder. And this will be shorter by a lot. This is even broke off and look how much shorter it is. That's going to get it back behind where it needs to be. So people do things, you know, you'll you'll run into stuff when you buy older stuff that other people did things. And I call it I call it OPK. OPK stands for other people's kids. Now, think about it for just a split second. Other, everybody, everybody in the world, except for yourself, are other people's kids. So I just call it OPK. And sometimes when OPKs are messing around with your stuff, not always, not always do they have as close attention to detail as you do. Just saying. But yeah, this way I get to eliminate... One more opportunity, right here, sorry. This here, I get to eliminate one more opportunity for leaking because I go from two spots to one spot by doing what I'm doing. I also protect it, and I also, you know, it won't be broken anymore. It takes a little bit to get all your parts together. You know, like I said, I've got wheel bearings coming. I got wheel bearings coming. I got bushings coming. I got a new pump coming, got a brand new drive shaft coming. Now, is this drive shaft rebuildable? You betcha. Will I rebuild it? Most likely. But I can put a brand new one in there. I can now play around with this and knock the U-joints out. Those U-joints are smaller than your average U-joint that's on a vehicle. They're a little bit they're tighter, you know. But so we're one step closer. Here again, I got all my new hardware in here. I can put that in there. The whole idea behind getting new hardware here is to get rid of that. I still don't understand that. I used a hammer to knock it out, but I also used my ratchet to pull that out. You know? But what I'm going to do is run a three-quarter inch, three-quarter inch 10 tap through everything. To put this back together, I'm going to use lock washers where need be. I'm also going to use some never seize so it never seizes. We're going to be doing that as we put it back together. So anyway, the goal is 10, 15 years from now when I have to possibly get into this again. I'm hoping it's that long or longer. Or after I send this down the road to somebody else down the, down the road in the future, they will go, wow. That dude knew to it. Whoever did this last, they won't even know it's me. Whoever did this last uh, knew what they were doing and did it right. That's all I'm after. And there again, when I do things the way I do things to, to try to do it right is um, a train left a building. Oh. Train just back into the station. When I'm doing things like this and I'm trying to do it right, it's because when something does fail or break, it's going to be a surprise to me. It'll be like, I couldn't have predicted that because I thought I'd covered all my bases. Now, these rubber pieces, these are $1.69 a piece. 
And at Tyson's or at the hardware stores, they're in the little pull-out drawer things. I told my wife, I'm looking for some rubber pieces. And because I had this rubber piece, and if this one needs to be thicker, I can double up. I bought four. When I'm buying hardware and bolts like this, when I was grabbing the nuts and bolts, or nuts and washers for this stuff, I was grabbing it by the handful, throwing it in the bag, making sure I had, if I needed seven, I'm like, I got a handful. Yep, that's seven or more, you know, just because. All right, we'll keep this in there. We'll, we'll have to put thread tape on here, screw this back in. I'll assemble this here so when I go back out to the tractor, I can grab the head of this and crank it around, get it in position. I did drop my hoses off at Napa. So he can start making me hoses. He told me, probably have them by Monday. I'm like, sweet. A lot of times I don't get in a big hurry and I don't try to get these guys. Uh, I don't tell them, I need it tomorrow. I need it tomorrow. Can I have it first thing Monday morning? It's like, unless I absolutely need it. You know, if I was doing jobs with this for other people, getting up and going is more important. But I'm not a guy that cries wolf. I've done this over the, over the years where people have told me something's hot rush and we jump over backwards to get things done, and then they don't pick it up for four or five days. You call them and tell them, hey, it's done. Okay, cool. Four or five days later, they pick it up. That's frustrating. Anybody of you out there that's been in that situation, that's very frustrating. And they lied to you. It wasn't a big rush. Now, something else could have come up that delayed their project, unforeseen circumstances that delayed their project. But... The next time they come in and tell you it's hot rush, you're going to go, yeah, the last one really wasn't. And especially if they didn't tell you what happened. So I always made it a point, anytime I had a supplier that I told them it was hot and I'd be there to, at noon tomorrow to pick it up, I was there at noon tomorrow whether I needed it or not. Because you don't want to destroy re relationships with your suppliers that supply you with services and goods. Um, because when it is hot, they're going to go, yeah, right. I'll order it second Tuesday next week. So now that things are starting to come together, since we've taken it all apart, I like the fact that I've got the whole tractor front end cleaned up so as my parts show up, I can start putting things back together and not worry about dirt and grease and grime getting into my joints and my in areas that need to seal. One of the things we'll have to clean up yet is these hubs. We'll get these cleaned up. We'll wire wheel all the nastiness out of here. Uh, I might spray paint these. I'm not spray painting the front of the tractor. No need to. But some of this stuff that, you know, like a front wheel, I'm not planning on pulling off for another 10 years. We'll probably shoot that with some paint just to, uh, did I get the right size? Half inch. Sorry. Squirrel. But, uh, well, I'm going to attempt to do something this afternoon that I probably shouldn't do. But I, I got to try it. I got, as you guys know, I got new front tires for the tractor. They're big front tires. They're bigger than my biggest trailer tires. And uh, I'm kind of wondering, can the Harbor Freight tire changer do it? So I'm going to make that its own video, but I'll show you the results in this video. So I don't waste your time in this video, which is already going to drag on a little bit. I shouldn't say drag on, that's not the right words. I've got a lot going on and I want to do it right and I don't want to waste you guys' time watching me clean up parts but I just wanted to share this with you for the specific reason to show you how to save some money and because maybe not a lot of you do that. If you went to the a regular Ace and More hardware store and bought these individually they're going to cost you like a buck and a quarter a piece. I bought everything that's blue and green in this container. All these washers, nuts, lock washers, $38. That's uh, pretty reasonable, I feel. All right, we're going to shove this workbench out of the way. We're going to bring the old tire changer machine and bolt it down on my, in my floor here. I currently have it bolted back here because when I had a vehicle in here, I've got two places I can bolt it down now, but I want... I want some big space. And I also bought da, 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 some of this tire mounting paste. It comes with a brush and a swab. I guess it's a swab. And I don't know how thick that is or whatnot, but we'll see. The one thing I don't have yet 
is the valve stems. They're going to be some valve stems that bolt into the rim. And I don't have those yet, but I can still put the tires on, mash the tire down, still get the valve stem in there, bolt it in place, and inflate. And we can have that part done. Now, your, your boy here is going to actually attempt to do the back tires, but not in here. We'll do that outside. Actually, we'll probably do it in here, but I'm going to break the bead. I'm going to use the backhoe, okay? The backhoe is going to, once I get it all back together and running, I can pick up that bucket and go... And I can break that bead on both sides. And then I can bring it in here because I don't know whether it's going to be cold or hot. or It definitely is going to be cleaner in here. But I can actually start wrestling with the uh, pry bars and stuff and get that tire on and off the rim. Off and back on the rim. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. All right, I'm excited to show you. Check that out. It's pretty good size. What we call easy out. Bolt extractor. It'll actually show on the package what size hole you should drill to use this. Now this can take out a variety of sizes because you can see it's tapered. It should work just fine. So I took my piece of a uh, half inch pipe with me, broken off piece, and just made sure that, that was, this would fit into the hole. And it goes in the hole about three eighths of an inch, maybe a little further. And being as it's tapered, it's only gonna make contact in uh you know just in a little bit little area but uh, because it's left hand twist it's going to try to suck itself down in there which gives you more bite and then when you go to back you know you're it's just going to back out the the pipe and it doesn't create any chips so let's see if i can get you right up in here somehow stabilized get a little light on the situation maybe stand on this osha approved five gallon bucket with a lid can you guys see in there see that hole now the goal is to put this right in there we don't want to disturb too much oh that wasn't even tight but even if it was tight you could actually tap on this I tried turning this with my finger this morning and I couldn't but now we got that broke off piece of pipe thread out which is awesome i wonder how does this come out that doesn't look like it would spin around and clear this that could be a concern can i back this one out with that that just doesn't look like it looks like it would hit how'd they get that in there what do you guys think will it go around Be really cool if it did. Nope. So what are my choices here? I think my choice here is I need to pull. That's probably why somebody didn't get it all done right. I need to pull that snap ring out, drive that pin out, and then I can pull this cylinder back out of here, do all my work here, putting all my new lines in, you know, my new pieces of pipe in with new pipe thread fittings and stuff like that and then slide it back in put this pin back in I wonder how tight that pin is in there I guess we'll find out tomorrow now I say tomorrow only because I'm not quite dressed to be out here in the chilly weather but I am dressed good enough to throw couple of tires in the back of the old Jeep here. Cross your fingers, it starts. Yep, battery's still up. This thing has some kind of parasitic bleed or leak or whatever you want to call it that takes electricity away from the battery over a amount of time, a certain amount of time. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guys set you guys over here while I wrestle these tires. Not so big. See if these will fit in here. Oh, they're so heavy. Oh, yeah, that fits. Oh, here. This one's still full around. Oh. I don't 
think my door is shut. Nope. Um. I don't want to roll out and get in the pond. We'll take those in and be right back for the new tires. Locked and loaded. That's a lot bigger tire than this tool was intended to be used for, for sure. Now one of these, this tire has a tube in it. I don't know if that's gonna make it more difficult, less difficult or not. One thing's for sure, I always pull the valve stem out. You want to be able to let the air out. Okay. Oh, will this bead breaker work on this tire? I'll be honest with everybody, I'm having my doubts that this is gonna work, but you really don't know until you try. Looks like I can get that up pretty high. Oh, that's a bead. There it goes. Wapo. Now this one, the bead had been broken before because the air got out somehow. And I re aired it up oh come on the question might not be as if the tool is up to the task am i up to the task that could be a real concern Oh, I wonder if a little soapy water would help. Kind of work around in there. It's already got me breathing hard. Uh, need a longer, longer piece of pipe. It's going to go. It's working that soap in there. <laughs> Booyah. I don't know. Something tells me this was the easy part. All right. Beat is broken. Now is this <laughs> is this big enough to do anything? <coughs> this thing's just plain heavy. Oh. Well, that part sits. It sits. 
This is going to be way too small. The good news is there's enough room here. I can get some pieces of wood in there maybe. Well, the good news is I had a, I got a box over here marked as wood blocks. And lo and behold, what does it have in it? Wood blocks. I don't know if we can do something like that maybe. The bottom seems wide enough. I just want to be able to put enough tension to hold it. This could be the tire that breaks the tire machine. Get some slippery stuff around here. This might be a situation with two people. It would be easier because somebody could hold the bead down. What I mean by that is hold this side down. Oh. Well, that came up. Can I get this in without popping that back? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's do that. I don't laugh. These spoons are made for like motorcycle tires. But it may just be just enough. And I can get this one in here. Uh, just over here enough without it popping back down. There we go. Get this down inside. Oh, good way to knock yourself out, I'm pretty sure. These big tires are no joke. There we go. Smaller bites. Well, I'm making some headway. This might just happen. I don't get too excited too quick, though. be well it's half half the battle huh <laughs> yikes now how do i get down inside this Ugh. let's get that tube out of there Oh, that thing is crusty. Ugh. Wow, that's nasty. I'll be, we're getting there. I don't know if that was a hard half or the easy half. I really don't know. I don't know. <sighs> All right. Yeah, that was, I'm thinking the top was easy maybe, huh? I don't know. This seems like a, there. I was trying to get this tire flexed over. Uh, down underneath that bead. Spike number two. Okay. I'm lost part of it. 
Do I use two of these now? Definitely a two man job, possibly. But we got a man up here. Don't want to lose a man card anytime soon. Can I get down underneath this side? Without losing ground. That's too big a bite. Dang it. Little bites. There we go. Now, can I hold this up and get this up? Negatory Ghost Rider. We'll try something else here. Ooh. Part of me wonders if it's easier to flip it over and work from the bottom side, you know? I'm going to take a look. Some of you tire people out there that know what you're doing are probably going, that's the hard way. Yeah, you're probably right. But the good news is the stand's holding things still for me. Ugh. Rim's definitely got a little rust we need to do some work on. Okay, here we go. Well, that might be, I don't know. I'm trying to have gravity work with me instead of against me, maybe. Maybe. Boy, these are so dry rotted along the beat, it's not funny. It almost wants to go. Hey, hey, gravity is my friend. Except when I step on the bathroom scale. Makes me curious if this will be enough smooth. If I can get it smooth enough to, it's not bad. We'll get the wire wheel a hold of it though. But pretty happy with the progress so far. All right, let's see if we can do this a little faster now that we know a couple of tick tips and tricks. Uh, as you can see, we're gonna start off squirting this thing down. I adjusted the pen in there so give them a little more leverage and it definitely helped me break the beat a little bit easier. 
These tires have been rusted and been on there for a while. Like this one, this one was the one that hadn't broke the bead when I was using it. But yeah, first operation is pretty easy. Once you get the first technique down, just start prying and get it out of there. And uh, as you saw, I'm using my spoons and stuff, I can get it out pretty quick. It's still a little bit of a wrestling match. So let's not let's not kid yourself kid yourself about that. It's still a thick, heavy tire, and it's still just going to take you some effort. And here I am trying to get the bead with a bead breaker pushed down a little bit deeper so I can get that thing wedged out of there. So it, it still wrestled with me a little bit, but that's okay. That's what it's all about. Like I said, this one seems to struggle a little more. Because you got to keep in mind, there's still a tube in there. There's still that other rubber you're wrestling around with. And once you get it started like that, then it just walk it on out. Walk it on out. And now that I knew to flip it over right away, that sped the second side up really fast because now I'm not trying to do weird stuff, but I had to get the old vice grips out and get a hold of the tube because it was it was just fused to the rim and fused to the tire. It was a mess. Who knows how long it's been in there? No idea. So now we can flip it over, hurry up and knock that other side out. And as you can see, these rims got a little bit of rust on them, no doubt about it. A little bit of lubrication, a little bit of pry bar, a couple of judo chops with the, with the foot here in a minute. We'll get it done. So these two green pry bars, I'm gonna modify in the future for working on big tires. But yeah, I had to kind of drive that thing around and get it, get it worked in there. Boom, you're out. Easy peasy. Now it's time to set the saw horses outside, get the rims out there and start getting ready to work on that mess. Nope, just kidding. So you can see that big old whammo in the rim there? That was already there. There's a couple of whammo, whammos in this rim, but uh, and it was just misshapen horribly. So I thought this is a great opportunity just to warm it up to a nice dull red and I can just massage that back in the place and then do the same thing with the other rim since I'm painting it anyway. This had a whoop on it as well. Who knows when, where, and how it happened, but a little torch. And yeah, I couldn't find my ball peen hammer. I think it was out in the lean-to. So I just grabbed my old claw hammer and it's not my e-swing. It's one of the cheap fiberglass hammers, but there again, just, just kind of shape it, massage it, wiggle it around. And once you wire wheel it, boom. You won't even be able to tell anything happened once I paint it. So right now we're just working that bead around, getting a comfortable position because I was there for a while. My hands were tingly from the uh, grinder. When I got done, I could have my fingertips were vibrating, but we got her done. Then what I did is stood it up and got that middle area and just focused on getting that cleaned up. There was a, there was a lot of rust in there and uh, left a lot of craters behind, but. It's much better. We well, yeah, wiped her all down really thoroughly with acetone because yeah, again, I'm getting ready to paint it. Uh, the acetone cleaned it up real nice. Got a good surface for the paint to stick to. And uh, what else can I say about that? Oh, there's a primer. Got the old rust oleum professional grade pr uh, primer. So it's for rusty stuff and whatnot. And so we just went after it. Got a good, good coat of paint on that. I ended up putting a uh, almost two cans of paint on between the two rims. Got it, got the inside and the outside. So far it looks pretty good. There you go, there's a shot of it. That's the next day. Oh no, that's that evening actually on the first one I painted. As you can see, it's pretty dry, getting dry and it's getting that dull finish to it. And here's the one I just finished up that's still pretty wet and shiny. All right, folks, that was a lot of wire wheeling, a lot of primering, and all that fun stuff. I wanted to get out in the daylight, maybe be able to see things a little bit better here, point out a few things. Now, the, the bad part about putting inner tube on something like this is supposed to be tubeless, and you guys can argue with me, leave your comments below, agree, disagree. Love to hear back from you. The tube, inner tube, doesn't seal off perfectly well around this hold and this is where most of my rust damage has occurred now as you can see the bead still looks pretty healthy come over here obviously this one had just a little more going on there but i don't think it's enough to hurt the integrity of rim enough that i'm going to worry about it if she breaks she breaks but i put it through the test already and she hasn't broke so i'm gonna have a tubeless i got a valve in here i'll show you that valve Big old thick piece of rubber here that'll seal up against the inside of the rim. This is cone shaped so it can apply pressure and this tighten that nut down until she seals up. Then you got your 
regular Schrader valve on the end here. So I think that'll work pretty good. That'll keep the only moisture that should be in this wheel then will be the moisture that's in the air hose that goes that fills it up. So that's the plan. As you can see here, there's more. Keep following this channel to watch me do some more stuff. I got water pump, bearings, kingpin bushings, kingpin reamer, new hoses, belt, new pump, new drive shaft. Anyway, stay tuned to this channel to see more of this big mo coming back together. Now, I just want to make a comment here. This is not... What I'm doing on this tractor is not a restoration. It is a repair and maintain situation. These wheels being painted, well, they were rusty. So I need to do something to help the preservation of them. Well, here I go and get dirt all over my fresh. We might wipe that down here anyway before we shoot it. So this part of the video is gonna be about what I'm doing for paint. Now what I'm gonna be using here some Rust-Oleum, gloss, sunburst yellow. It's kind of a darker yellow. Might match it, might not. I also got some hardener, catalyst hardener. Increases gloss, increases hardness, reduces dry time. I'm interested in the two out of three. I'm not worried about the gloss. I also got some reducer. Add one pint of reducer to one gallon. So there's a ratio there, right? Same with this hardener. This hardener, I think the mix ratio, if you look at it, this will actually treat one gallon. So it makes it easier to take the one gallon, divide it up, you know, the ounces and how this ratio would work. Then I'll figure out my ounces, and I got this measuring cup, which is not ideal. I've got more, I've got actual paint cups coming, but they won't be here, and I want to get these wheels painted so I... I bought a cheap old plastic measuring cup. I went to all my local areas, could not find a single plastic mixing cup. Even at the O'Reilly's, at the AutoZones, I'm like, really? Come on. Uh, then I also bought this super cheap gravity feed spray gun. Then I bought the extra throwaway type things for it. It came with the regulator, and I've got the regulator set at 25. Nope, 20. And I might have to do some adjustment as we go here. But that's the plan. So let's get to mixing. Let's do some calculations and get to mixing. First thing we got to do is mix the existing can of paint up. Now that we got that mixed up, the math is simple. So if I want to mix... Uh, 16 ounces of paint, I need one ounce of hardener. And 16 ounces of reducer is going to be two ounces of hardener. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and fill this up to 16 ounces. Which is going to be way too much paint. But since I don't know what I'm doing, this is just a good learning experience. This first go around, then I can... Gauge. I don't do that much paint, guys, so we can gauge what we're doing after that. Now, hardener, it's uh, 16 to 1, so I need one ounce of hardener. So we'll take it from 16 up to 17, just like that. Then reducer, be two ounces for the same amount. And the only reason I'm reducing it is because I want it to flow through the gun just a little bit better than it would otherwise. So it's 17. Then we'll go up to 18, 19. There we go. Now we got our ratio. And I can go ahead and seal my paint can back up just for the simple fact that once you've mixed it with hardener and reducer, uh, you pretty much... Lock this batch in is all you're going to get out of it. So now we need to mix this up real thorough. That's coming off there pretty nice. That ought to spray pretty good. Now 
Now the other thing, thing the instruction said is after you mix it up, let it sit for 30 minutes. So that's what we'll do next. Now it's time to shoot some of that yellow on there. I ended up mixing it up and that 16 ounces wasn't quite enough. I put some good coats on here and you'll see me here in a second when I get done shooting. Uh, I'll go in and mix up a little bit more, not a whole lot more, maybe another eight ounces because uh, I got to rotate these things to get the bottom. So I, I try to get everything with decent coverage all over. And as you can see, I'm wearing my mask to keep all the smell out. But yeah, right there, I'm going back and making some paint, rotate it over a little bit on both of them, and then go grab the gun again and finish shooting them. Because uh, I, I definitely wanted good coverage on everything. There's my old boy Merc there. He's out there keeping an eye on me for a minute. But yeah, we got them all covered up. They looked really good. I'm really tickled with how they turned out. This little light I got on my chest, that came in handy. <laughs> I could see in the dark. Well, there they are, guys. Uh, they look really nice so far. There again, we're not going for perfection. We're going for, you know, rust prevention. Got a little orange peel right there. Maybe a touch of orange peel here. No, nope, that's just rust craters. But uh, I think once we get the big old black tire wrapped back around it, it ain't gonna look too bad. Now that hardener, there again, I put hardener in the paint because here I am trying to, hardener should make it dry a little faster, make the paint a little harder. Is that good or bad? I don't know just yet, right? And uh, this little light here is kind of handy. Just hang it right in my old bibs here and walk around in the dark and see things. But uh, no, that, I'm pretty pretty tickled with how those two things turned out. When we get that new black rubber around them and the new valve stems in them. Big Mo is going to have a new pair of front shoes. And the reason, like I said, I bought the gun. And I bought these. You can buy these for like 5 for $10, like $2 a piece. Uh, this is the original thing that comes with it. Is it the best gun in the world? Heck no. It's the trigger sticky. It's, it's what you get for, uh, I think I got that on sale for $19.99. But between uh, the gun and the paint and the amount of, of coverage I was able to get, I just spent, because this Rust-Oleum, these cans here, no joke, for the good stuff, professional, it's $10 a can. So to get the coverage I got there would have taken at least four cans, so at least 40 bucks. That paid for the gun, and I used three quarters of a can of this uh, quart here. I bought two just in case. I'll have to buy some more because the back wheels are gonna be like painting a small car. That's all there is to it. They're gonna be big and awkward, and I'll have to paint those. I'm going to call it in stages. Uh, I'll probably paint the inside and one face on sawhorses, for instance, and then when it's all cured, I'll flip it over and paint the other face. But uh, there again, I use that hardener and that reducer. Now, it, this stuff here, when you're using reducer, you best be wearing your paint respirator or respirator. I couldn't smell. Even though I don't get a full seal around this goatee and whatnot, I couldn't... I couldn't smell paint. It's all out there. I couldn't smell it, which is what you want. If you don't smell it, good chance you're not breathing it. But I'm thinking that yellow is a little brighter <laughs> than the old uh, Ford yellow that was there, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that because it's going to look okay with the black wheels and those all four wheels being the same color yellow, even though it doesn't match the tractor. And maybe one day I paint the whole tractor that color. You know, but Moe's got to earn its keep. It does some good stuff for me. I buy it some new shoes and some paint. Does some good stuff for me. I buy a new pump and all this other gear we got over here on the bench. It's really, really filling my bench up. But uh, we'll be back when we're ready to use the old Harbor Freight tire changer. That is not designed to do a tire this big. But we'll make it work. I got some ideas. Uh, instead of using my 2x4s, I think I got some plywood that I can cut some circles out of and, you know, make that happen. Thanks for following along so far. We'll be back when we're ready to put the tires on.
Thanks for watching so far. If you haven't liked or subscribed, don't forget to do that. It helps the channel out a lot, and I appreciate it. And uh, leave me some comments on what you think. And uh, I, I try to respond to all my comments. I'm not so big yet that I can't respond to all my comments. Some of them don't, YouTube don't let me see for some reason. Uh, I'll find them on, a, on the other regular comment instead of on the comment on the video. But then sometimes I don't see them at all. Uh, depending on some keywords that might be left in there, I might not see your comments. So, all right, we'll be back. Man, those are going to uh, those look good. I like it. I like it when a plan comes together. All right, guys, we're back out here a couple days later. The paint is cured. Well, it's about 48 hours cured. Cured, I don't know. Am I going to scratch it? You betcha. I already have. I did this one. And you're going to nick the paint. You're going to do some... Some unspeakable things to the paint that you just put on there. But here again, you saw the inside, the rust that was in the inside. We cured all that. Am I going to scratch some of that paint off when I'm putting it together? Yeah. Why? Because I don't have the right tools. But I have some tools. I have the Harbor Freight that I was wanting a noisy. I have the Harbor Freight tool here, tire changer. That is definitely not designed or intended to be used on this size of a wheel. These are big tires. And these are, you know, these are, this is designed to do a 15, 16, 17 inch car tire type of thing. But, uh, yeah. one of these guys, I don't know. The rubber, this is so thick. This is so stiff. But between my wife and I, and I couldn't have done it by myself, I have to have help uh, to hold a couple of more pry bars in place to get the second side in. First speed. I was able to knock in. This time, I'm gonna walk you guys through it with me. You're gonna watch me wrestle it. But I bought this tire mounting paste off Amazon. I'll leave a link below, but it's actually a paste. And I'm thinking for the amount of tires I do, this will last me 400 years. But it's actually a paste. It comes with this brush and you just kinda of just soak your brush up, it looks like. And then you're gonna just, you know, let's just say moisten the tire a bit. So we'll put that around on here like this. We want to get this all moistened and you know, we want the whole bead just slathered in this stuff. Cause this is kind of like a grease that isn't greasy when it, I guess once it dries out, it's just going to be what it is. But don't, I'm being generous with it because, well, I have a whole giant tub of it and I'm thinking more slicker is better. And we'll do both sides. But I got the first side done so far. And we're just going to, I'm just going to just make sure I got it all in there good. And I want to get the back side of the second side. Just to help it slip past the, you know, over the rim. But first things first. Okay, that was second thing's third. Let's get the wheel in here. Sat out in the sun all day yesterday, what sun there was. And then it also uh, been sitting out in the rain all this afternoon, which is fine. It's all fine. We'll just dry it off. We're gonna make sure we don't trap any moisture inside the tire is the goal inside the wheel now these valve stems i bought from the same place i bought the tires it's all made in usa stuff the tires are made in usa they're titan tires but it has a rubber seal here that you're going to mash out and it'll take form to some of this let's just say crater type surfaces that were on the um inside of the rim I put 20 pounds in that other one. I got to look it up to see how many pounds it should have. But when you put it to the bottom here, it looks like it squishes out pretty good. Get my little deep wall on it and just put some squeezes on it. There again, this isn't holding 120 pounds of pressure. And you got to keep in mind, you're just tightening it down against rubber. All right. 
let's get the and that and that also is very rigid in there when it's in there which is nice i'm gonna go ahead and give it a whammo on this side slippery side down oh this is so heavy nope not yet too soon yes too soon why you say well i'm gonna put my blocks back in here you know the adapter kit to go to the giant tire mode and then we'll put this on and where did i just put that thing oh, over here because it's important to hold the tire or the wheel nice and rigid and the boss is gonna have to come out here and help me with this because it's takes three hands and i almost forgot to just you know dry it off i want to get the inside dry i don't want to trap all this moisture inside the tire unnecessarily see a couple of bugs were attracted to it, attracted to it in the night is that thunder we got some thunderstorms my wife loves thunderstorms uh, they're relaxing as long as they're not damaging you don't care if they're damaging oh you should we work hard for everything we have and we don't want a storm to take it all away in seconds you know what you know what i meant sorry i didn't mean to read anything further into it love yeah, cats are visiting lots of cats all right we got the juice on this side feels pretty slippery oh these are so heavy uh, compared to a car tire so i can just get this like uh, 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 uh. i get that started i can keep I, this one i can i was able to walk on by myself some by some miracle and hold this tight and just kind of get her going and then get another bite. Uh, doesn't feel like you're winning at first, but then somehow you do. Uh, there we go. There again, trying to keep the paint chip to a minimum, but it's gonna happen. Like I said, it's not a show tractor. It's just a, it's just a good tractor. One more and we got that done. There. So that's pretty easy. And that's why we got to remember the fun times. Because <laughs> that was the fun times. Now it's the not so fun part. Now we're going to go ahead and paste the living crap out of this side. Those things are about to get real. Then tomorrow I'll check the other side or the other tire, all these tires, and make sure I still have 20 pounds in them. Otherwise, I might have to do some bubble soapy water test to find out if it's my poor seating job or dirty bead. But this is all fresh rubber and fresh paint, except for the part I screw up. Huh? Why am I going so far up on it? Because if a little's good, a lot's got to be better. Good question, though. All right. So, what I found when I did the first one, because I didn't waste you guys' time watching that, is it's going to sound horrific to you, but get your vice grip <laughs> and clamp on right here, because this thing, it's... I don't know what kind of machinery it would take. It's not the kind I have here, obviously. But need something to keep that bead from rolling around on me. Yeah, we don't need to lose an eye. So we'll take this pry bar, get right in here underneath the second bead because we want to get this tucked down like that. So this side, when I start pulling on it, sucks into the deepest part of the rim. By no means am I a professional. Oh, oh, you gotta work it around first. Hang on. Okay. I am. So I'm just doing a little. You're just getting me over. I know. Okay. Keep coming over with it. 
Okay, you hold that right there. Hold those two there. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing. But she's holding these down. She's got lots of leverage on me. And start getting this tire to come in like that. I'm going to take smaller bites here so I can get it sucked back in. Hold what you got right there. Just hold that. I'm going to take smaller bites here see if I can make that work. That's coming. There we go. We're gaining on it. Whew. We're gaining on it. A few more. Yours ain't doing much now. Hmm? I said yours ain't doing anything now. Um, uh, give me a favor here. It's up. <laughs> That's what I ended up doing the last. I'll do one. this. Yeah, do right there. That's what I ended up doing the last. One. Just there we go. I got it. Sheepers. Those are a rassle. It's making me second think about possibly doing the uh the big ones. The mama didn't raise no quitter. Then I'm gonna what? sounds like a bit right away. Yeah. Maybe. Don't ever put your fingers. Hey, hey, bad part about these, they don't give you a gratifying pop. Well, it's on. Now we'll touch this rim up a little bit with some touch-up paint. I ain't, I ain't worried. We weren't going for perfection here. We were just going for get a rusty wheel cleaned up and a new tire put on it. And all I can say about that is mission accomplished. Now hopefully somebody you guys got good friends or a good wife in your life that can will come over and help you wrestle with something like this. And it says not to inflate more than 40 pounds to seat the bead. And uh, ideally I'd be putting this on the tractor and rolling it around. Now I have no idea how many pounds it's supposed to have in it. I'm just putting 20 in it for now. Because it had 25 there. Now, did the Ar Harbor Freight tire changer work? Yes, it did. Um, actually, really well. You know, just a couple of two by fours and then crank down on it, it holds it. Can you use it in the traditional fashion of trying to walk around it and break the bead off? No. It did break the bead, as you saw earlier, and it did be another hand to hold this rim in place while I wrestled it around. So I'd say that's a win, win, win. Love it. Loving it. Oh. So much heavier now. And as you guys can see, the tire has a lot more round to it. All right, folks, will the Harbor Freight tool work for a big tractor tire like this? The answer is absolutely yes. Is it working in its traditional design manner? Eh, not 100%, but we got 90% there. Uh, I bought a couple of these green pry bars, and I didn't do it, but I'm going to do it for the big tires is I bought them with the intentions of reshaping them and polishing them. So I'm going to get rid of all these sharp edges, and I'm going to repolish the, the nail puller, if you will. I'm going to reshape it, rebend it, and make it better a better fit for doing the bigger tires. These are implement rims. These are big industrial rims. Did I scratch them? Sure. Are they going to get scratched by everything when I start using them? You betcha. The, the good news is we got rid of that rubber inner tube. 
that has just rusted the crap out of the inside that we've cured now. Got rid of all that flaky rust and we put new paint on it, which should last it. I mean, let's be honest with each other. This should last another 10, 20 years. It'll outlast the tires, most likely. Because a good chance that I will damage a tire on something and have to replace one. And then, we can, then we'll, help, we'll be able to assess what's going on inside. I will also determine how much pressure I need to put in these. Because it says 35 to mount it to the thing. 40 pounds, it can handle that. Obviously, 40 pounds, it said on another sticker on the tire. Uh, to inflate to seat the bead. It says don't exceed that. Uh, operating pressure. You know, when you got big tires like this, 20 pounds in a tire this size is a lot of pressure. Uh, 20 pounds in a tire this big makes it rock hard. These are still soft at 20, but there's still a lot of air and there's a lot of volume there. And the more, the more surface area you get with X amount of pressure, there's more pounds per square inch, so to speak. Um, I think. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment down in the video, or leave a comment down below. Uh, as you can see behind me, I've actually gathered up a generous amount of parts uh, the Big Mo is about ready to go back together. This is something I had to do. You know, you got to do stuff that you can do that you have while you're waiting on more stuff to finish your project. Uh, I'm excited to now put these back on. We're going to take the center. These here, I'm going to, these are rusty too, but they're so thick. You know, even if you knocked it off and did some rust converter and didn't do anything else to it, it'd take a hundred years for that to rust into something unusable. But as I put all these nuts and bolts back together in this tractor, I will definitely be using Never Seize. I'm going to chase the threads on the tractor. It needs threads chasing before I pull, put bolts back in. I'll put Never Seize on everything just for the simple fact. None of it was hard to get off. I wouldn't call it. I, I, I was worried about getting some bolts out. That didn't happen. But I also like it to be easier to put on. It also helps some cor for corrosion uh, on the threads. I'm going to paint these center hubs black. So black against the in the center of this with the black wheel is actually going to look pretty sharp, I think. Cool news is this can go back on. Now, what am I waiting on? When I do kingpin bushings on the tractor, I've got these hand reamers. I'm waiting for the pilot and the bushing for the pilot so I can put the kingpin bushings back in. You got to install them when you buy kingpin bushings. And we'll go over this in another video as well. Uh, where's my piece? This is a brand new pin, brand new bushing. They don't fit, and that's for a reason. This is to allow... Oh, that's cool. I see they did that. Cool. This is to allow you to hand ream these to a precision fit, so they have a nice fit, and you don't want to start off with any... being too loose, and it'll be contacting as much surface as possible here so you get maximum amount of life out of the bushing. When I put the king, when I do the, the kingpin bushing in the spindle install and reaming is going to be its own video of uh, reinstalling the spindles back on the tractor and then putting the hubs with the new bearings back on. That'll all be one video because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of little bit of information there I want to share with you that I think is important. Uh, some of you may not like the detail, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you anyway. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. I've now my heart rate has slowed down. My wife is a trooper for helping me. Uh, she knows that some of this can be a rassle. And I was trying to have her hold things and be as safe as possible. I don't want her to get hurt. Uh, nothing will feel... I, I'd rather get hurt instead of her getting hurt. That's for darn sure. So I gave her some tasks that leverage and stuff that she could manage better uh, while I was doing a little more a little more strong arm in there. But uh, she's, she's awesome. Uh, love her to death. Well... Don't be afraid to leave comments for my wife down below that says, hey, you're a trooper for helping him out. Um, and you could, this would be fun. You guys know the whole genius thing. Um, this would be fun for her to read. Let's do this. If you guys will help me out. I know there's a few of you that will, and I love you for it. I'd always, you know, my wife hates it when other people go, oh, you're a genius. That's just a genius idea, or that was a genius plan that drives her crazy when she reads those comments. So, if you guys would do me a big favor, and in the comments go, I'm second guessing who's the genius in this team. I'm pretty sure it's the wife that's the genius. Do that. That'll brighten her day up, and she'll be going, what? And I won't tell her. 
I won't let her know the gig is up till she actually asks me the question. It's like, why are they calling me genius now? <laughs> so if you guys do that for me, I know a few of you will because you, longtime followers, you got. I know I, I reply to all the all the uh, comments that I can, folks. Uh, they're not coming in fast and furious. I haven't got a big head about anything. And even when I get to you know 100,000 subscribers someday, I'll still answer as many as I can. Um, that'll just be one of those things I want to continue to do. You guys are you guys are helping me grow the channel. You're following, you're liking, you're sharing, you're doing all the right stuff to help me out. I appreciate it. Uh, this is something I would be doing, fixing up my backyard, doing the things pretty much, let's call it irregardless if, if I had a YouTube channel or not. But what I'm hoping this will do is you guys see me tackle stuff I've never done before. I've never done tires like this before. I've never had a backhoe in my life. I've never had a diesel engine, period. But buying the backhoe is like a whole bunch of mystery that's like, don't be afraid. You'll figure it out. There's, there's lots of good resources out there. There's Google and there's YouTube. And I rely on YouTube for a lot of stuff. If I don't know, I'll go to those two sources first and try to discover something. And if not, start going to your local folks. Go to your local Napa. Go to your local, like over here in Riverside, Iowa, there's a place called Snowblins. Snowblin, yeah, Snowblin. And they help me out uh, on some stuff. You know, they're willing to go. I like the guy that owns the place and, and his wife are awesome people, salt of the earth. Uh, I had brought in a hose, and I'll show you that hose in an upcoming video. I had a problem, and he figured out how to fix it by thinking outside the box, and that's what I like. So him and I get along really good because that's what I love is people that think outside the box. Not people that get right up next to the box and press on, on the inside of it thinking out of the box. Uh, there again, a term that's been way overused. Okay, well... Don't be afraid to like and subscribe. If there's links in the videos to things on Amazon uh, that will take you to the website, you can continue to shop. You don't even have to buy that product. This is the cool part. You don't even have to buy that product. Just use the link in my video to go there and then shop and buy everything else you want to buy. That gives me some kickback. I get a 3% commission. I'll be up front with 3%. So every $100 you spend, I get three bucks. Now, as you know here, this this little this costs more than three bucks, and uh, but every little bit helps fund the channel a little more, so I can do more, so I can share more, so I can appear more. Uh, yeah, this is this this backhoe has gotten rather expensive, but I'm also and I've told you guys this before. I'm looking at it compared to if I had to rent the piece of equipment to do what I'm going to be doing on the days I need to do it. Because like today, if I rented one yesterday and I brought it today and it's raining for three quarters of the day, then what? I lost a lot of rent. And call it $100 a day. I'm guessing that would be a, a reasonable to low-end price for renting a piece of heavy equipment. But tomorrow and the next day might be sunny. I don't have to do anything. I just go out there and get it when I'm done working on it. But my goal, the goal here behind doing all the things I'm doing, like I said, it's not a restoration. This is a rebuild, rehab, and bring it back so it's better than it was when I got it. And by the time I use it 10 years, it's still better then than when I got it today or three months ago so got exciting news coming up stay tuned don't forget to like and subscribe and you'll see some other exciting stuff i'm bringing onto the channel i got another piece of equipment that will enhance the big mo plus i've got a lot of neat things i discovered on big mo i want to share with you so stay tuned as we put this thing back together and fire it up for the first time Two to three weeks, we'll be back up and running and operational is my estimation. So follow along. Be a part of the progress. Tell people, you know, if you wanted to go get a piece of equipment like this, now you know what to look for. You know some of the things. You're watching what I'm doing. You might see some of the pitfalls I'm having. So far, I haven't had any pitfalls other than, you know, you're going to have old hoses. You're going to have wore out bearings. You're going to have wore out bushings. But is this steel still there? The cab of the tractor, has it got big old rusty holes in it? Does it look like it's been greased on a regular basis? That helps things, that helps it save some money down the road. All right, that's enough. This is Michael, and you guys are watching this. It's on a Sunday afternoon, most likely. Not my normal Sunday morning because I had some other things come up during the week that kind of, I wouldn't say tripped me up, but needed to happen in order to keep this project and other projects moving forward. Uh, there again, I try to release one every Sunday. We'll stay tuned on RMD Creations, the boat channel. 
Uh, we're going to be starting putting some of the stuff back together on Big Blue. And uh, just got to, I got to start doubling down. I'm going to start trying to get do vid two videos a week. Uh, it's going to be tough and because it takes a lot of hours to get this stuff done. Um, and a lot of research and not research so much, but you got to gather up parts. You got to go to the bolt store. You got to do research and buy stuff off offline. And you just got, it takes time to gather up stuff. Finally, you get enough stuff gathered up. It's like, oh, cool. I can roll for two to three weeks. But in those two to three weeks, you got to keep thinking past that to keep things, uh, uh, purchases and or projects or how you're going to attack it. You got to have a plan. Do I always have a plan? No. Do I wing it? You bet. But it's also with safety and being entertaining to you guys and mine. So, all right. I like that yellow. It's a lot brighter yellow than the Ford yellow, but that's okay. This thing's going to have a couple of, a couple of colors of yellow on it when I'm done. That's all right. And guess what? It's still going to dig a hole. It's still going to pick up a bucket load of dirt. And we're still going to reshape. We're going to reshape almost four acres worth of land here by the time it's all said and done so stay with me i haven't even showed you some of the projects that i've gotten started with it i've got that on the back burner for now until i can actually continue on with it uh because i want to i want to introduce you to the project and then i want to be able to continue to do the project throughout throughout the summer you might have seen hints of it in the in the past videos but i want to get more serious about it kind of share my plans and then i want you guys' feedback all right Remember, this is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is, and I'll see you on the next video if I'm lucky. And I hope you guys feel lucky to be able to watch me. Believe you me, I don't have a big head about this. I'm just an average guy doing average things with <laughs> above average ambition. <laughs> I guess you can call it, don't fall on my leg. All right, yeah, I had these propped up here. All right, basically to get the thumbnail. All right, now I can unbolt this anchor, put it back somewhere else, and then I got to work on my car. Yep, it never stops. Oh. TPS sensors. Why do they last? Why do they last only nine months now? The original and all lasted since 2011. 13, 14, 13, 12 years. Mm -hmm.